Good day. My name is Dr. Jerry O'Neill. I'm an internal medicine and critical care specialist. The fine folks over at Dallas Live tonight have asked me to make a series of short videos giving you medical information that you may find useful at home or useful when you need to go to see your doctor or your health care provider. The first episode is today and I'm going to discuss the topic of vital signs. Now, most of you know what vital signs are. When you've been to the hospital or to a doctor's office, or even sometimes to a dentist's office, they'll take vital signs when you get there. The vital signs are blood pressure, heart rate, temperature, and breathing rate. These are numbers that say something about your overall health. They don't provide a diagnosis, but they say generally what condition you're in. Are you really sick? Are you well? Are you just kind of sick? The vital signs will help tell that, and if done successively, will tell if you're getting better or worse. So vital signs have been done for almost probably 200 years, and have been the mainstay of medicine and likely will remain so. The devices used to measure these will vary, but the signs themselves remain the same. Today, I'm going to go over what vital signs are, and in a later video, we'll discuss each vital sign individually. The first vital sign, and some people would think the most important, is your blood pressure. The blood pressure is composed of two numbers, a higher number, which is on top, and a lower number, which is on the bottom. These are referred to, the high number, as your systolic pressure, okay? That's over, excuse me, that's on top of the lower number, which is referred to as the diastolic pressure. Now, systolic pressure, the higher number, refers to the pressure generated when your heart contracts or beats. It's a spike in your pressure. The diastolic pressure, which is the lower number, is the residual pressure in the system. Uh, the two together can sometimes be called the mean arterial pressure, but they're merely a mathematical uh, variation of both numbers taken together. Blood pressure should be taken in most adults probably twice a year if you're normal. If you're not normal and have blood pressure problems, or if it's suggested by your physician, perhaps you need to take it more often, even daily. I would suggest that when you take your blood pressure, you write it down. It's important to keep a record of where you've been and perhaps it can help you tell where you're going. The other thing is blood pressure should always be taken at rest and should probably be taken at the same time each day. Many people prefer to do it when they first arise in the morning or before they go to bed. Blood pressure should not be taken when you've been vigorously exercising, when you're upset about something, when you're anxious about something, uh, or when there's another problem that would make your body work harder. It should be taken at rest. It's also important to know the position that you should be in, blood pressure, whether you take it at the wrist, at the elbow, or even with some of the newer devices that may come out in the future, should be taken at the level of your heart. So wherever you're measuring it, be it your arm or your, your elbow, uh, it should be taken at the level of the heart. There are a few individuals who have to take their blood pressure in their leg. In that case, it should probably be taken lying down. The second vital sign is your pulse rate. That's your heart rate. That's just how fast your heart is beating. You can find it easily in most folks at the wrist, gentle pressure over your wrist on the thumb side, and you can feel it beating. You can do the same thing at the pit of your elbow on the opposite side, the little finger side. You, gentle pressure, you can feel a strong pulse. As you've seen in the movies, many times you can take it in the neck, that's the carotid artery, 
You can feel it just ahead of the angle of the jaw, uh, a little gentle pressure, and you'll feel it. Don't press too hard, okay? You can also feel it, if you wish, in your groin. You can, some people can also feel a good pulse on the top of their foot. The best thing to do is count your pulse for one minute. If you really don't have time or the inclination to do this for a minute, do it at least 30 seconds and multiply times two. That gives you the rate per minute. Your pulse rate normally should be regular. That is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. Everyone normally has an occasional skipped beat, which is actually an extra beat, but we can go into that later. That would feel like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a single skip beat. If you have irregular heart rates, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that can be a problem. Also, if you have a very fast heart rate, for whatever reason, that is in excess of 120 beats per minute, at rest, that can certainly be a problem. The next vital sign is temperature. Temperature is your, your, your body's heat content. It should never be taken when you've been out exercising or when you've been in the extreme heat or extreme cold or you're extremely tired from exhaustive exercise. It should be taken internally, if, if you can, with a thermometer or other device under the tongue Today, electronic devices that use infrared light are frequently used to measure it uh, on the forehead. These devices are available at drugstores, online, and because of the COVID epidemic, many, many were made that are never sold, and so they're all relatively under $10. Most are generally accurate. The final vital sign is your respiratory rate. That is how fast you're breathing. This is a more difficult subject to deal with because respiratory rate varies under a large number of circumstances. It shouldn't, like the others, it shouldn't be taken when you've exercised or when you're anxious uh, or when you're very, very tired uh, or very, very hot or very, very cold. It should be taken at rest under normal circumstances. And it's probably best that someone in your household count your respiratory rate for a minute or at least a half minute and multiply times two. Someone else in your household should count your respiratory rate for the following reason. When people concentrate, I do it myself, when I concentrate on my breathing, I tend to breathe faster. Breathing is one of those things that usually we do and we don't think about it. But if we start thinking about it, it sets off all sorts of things and it can affect the rate of breathing. So these are the four vital signs. These are important. Normal adults probably should take their blood pressure and pulse at least twice a year. Others who have medical problems that may be affected by these, that may affect these vital signs, should be taken as instructed by your physician. My name is Dr. Jerry O'Neill. This has been a few minutes of medicine brought to you by Dallas Live tonight. We'll see you next time. Thanks.